but Gage could be a way to go. That's another direction as well, right? A Xin Zhao along the similar line. So Hacker here with the Xin Zhao once again. Now it's a question if Weiwei wants to pivot because each game we've seen a different jungler come through. Volibear banned against him in the first rotation by Ultra Prime, but this time BLG get it. And the Renata, Ooh. something we didn't mention, that Crispus had banned against him also in the first ban phase each game. And that was the change, right? That was what, what they had to leave open for Gwen. I, I get it, having to ban away the Zeri, not wanting to give away away the Viego. So we're going to have this champion extremely good uh, against dive compositions that want to come into it. Can fall prey in lane is something we've noted many times. Very long cooldowns. Uh, you don't really have any mobility to be able to get away from things like Thresh's, Nautilus's, Leona's. Sultra Prime going to lock in the Thresh. Does provide oh. that engaged four lane. Also giving the safety to Elk to allow him to reposition. Uh, and with how we've seen Elk play this series, I thought that could be critical, right? Every team fight has been on a knife's edge. So Elk repositioning once could lead to a team fight victory for the side of Ultra Prime. And uh, while I'm talking about champions that have just been banned game after game, I mean, the Thresh was one of them too. So Shousey, the mayor of Hook City, now finally gets to wear his sash. And when we have a strong 2v2 set up on, you know, both sides, we're going to look at the solo lanes here, Lyric. Jungler's locked in. We need mid and top. Camille banned against Breathe. What a surprise. Uh, Cannon goes through as well. We are just taking off the standards. So champion pools are going to go all right. And for Ultra Prime, I mean, now the big thing I'm, I'm curious about is going to be mid lane. Considering we've had the LeBlanc come out in both games, the Rise already taken off the table. And Cryon's champion pool, I think, has been a lot more kind of like counter pick oriented. His third most played is is the Syndra, which Syndra you can blind pick, but you know, Ultra Prime would once again be opting into this very heavy kind of mid game bursty sort of composition to be able to play around at. Azir take it off the table. So they at least don't want to give BLG the same Vex. options of, of disengage and poke that they had last time around. How do you run into this lyric? I was thinking Vex, Oriana still up and available. Uh, Cry and a pretty standard player. Yeah, so goes towards the Oriana. If he would have gone to, to something more proactive, I, I would have imagined it being the Syndra that I... Oh, wait, Syndra being taken off the table. Yeah. Hasn't actually played the Vex, so... Does just go towards the Oriana. Now for BLG and what Fofo can respond with. I mean, we've seen Fofo be willing to take out things uh, like like the Aries. Of course, Zoe as well has been one of his big picks. Victor, so he's going to pick more for his own individual lane. Uh, does quite well in the 1v1. It fits the comp and the identity they've had all series. And BLG are sticking to it. BLG is sticking with these sort of like poke range compositions, contesting over mid wave and just trying to force Ultra Prime to make their own mistakes. Ultra Prime wanting to look for some hard engage. Yeah. And this could be the go to, right? We've seen Malphite picked into Jace before, can very easily itemize into some armor. You're going to fall behind in CS, but you will mostly just be chilling in the lane. Wine. And they go for it. Okay, so Lyric. I look at Ultra Prime. I think anyone can do the same thing and say, if you press the alt button and there's a lot of people there, you get a pretty good sandwich. Yeah, so ultimates, very key for Ultra Prime. On the opposite side, flashes, very important for the side of BLG. We're going to be keeping track of those because even if BLG can, even if Ultra Prime can force like small skirmishes just to bait out summoners before an objective comes up, and then when the objective comes up, go for the fight once again. Sure, maybe you've lost some flash as well, but you have those key ultimates coming through with the Malphite. You can then be able to take those fights. So uh, very summoner focused. We already know the holistic identities, right? It's pretty much poke versus engage. A lot's going to come down to these laning phases where BLG have drafted winning lanes. Uh, they have the Jace, which will be able to poke out. They have the Victor who will win in that isolated scenario. And then in the bot lane, it's going to come down to the man you named the mayor of Hook City. Yeah. Jousy is Blitzcrank, Thresh, Nautilus. This guy invented Hook City, and people just came along because they heard so many good things about it. Welcome, says Jousy, as Chris finally gets his champion. If that hook lands, he's in a lot of trouble. But we know that Renatas don't mind a bit of engage. Stand behind the minion wave, have a good time. Because this game all comes down to it. Lyric, game number three. BLG versus Ultra Prime. It is a battle for BLG to lock themselves into playoffs. Now, if that's not happening in this series, don't get me wrong, but they'll move to eight wins. Then they simply have to beat a BLG, excuse me, LGD. Maybe they've already beaten themselves there. To get into playoffs. BLG need this win desperately. Ultra Prime making them work for it. 
because UP are already out of playoffs, but they ain't out of the LPL. Uh, this team looking pretty good, and now with an ultra-reliant composition, let's press the R button, we'll wait at the six point. Around first Herald lyric, I'm guessing, is when we start talking about the fancy pants that come from the red side. Yes. Other than that, we're going to be looking at bot lane. I want to see Shouncy. Hey, I will actually, we'll try to go for this. I think the most they would just go and get a, a ward on red buff, so shouldn't expect too much action. But we need to see Ultra Prime steal this series away from BLG. We need lyric. What'd you realize? I need to interrupt you. It's important. Um, Oriana and Renata are very similar. I haven't read into the lore. But Oriana, I'm pretty sure, is from Piltover. And Renata is like a chem baron from Zorn. We're getting the arcane thing going here. And they both have floating objects next to them. Renata is the Oriana of the underworld. Is that important to is you? Ori is Oriana from Piltover? I'm pretty sure she's Piltover, isn't she? Yeah, it's a, she's built in Piltover. And then something, I think she got... She had to go down downstairs. I don't know what else happened. I need to read up on law before I make bold statements like this, don't I? You do. Well, apparently <laughs> she's from Piltover, okay. but apparently a lot of her lore also revolves around something about Zahn. But yeah, why, why are we bringing up lore? But point is, Ultra Prime, I expect early game, the action should be around bot. We already see Hacker uh, kind of pivoting to that lane right, pathing down to that lane right now. I'm sorry. As uh, does Red Buff into a standard clear. Way, way... Looks like he is going to match him on that one. I yep. mean, top side, you don't really need to invest any resources on the side of BLG. You already know your Jace will just win. And Aliez. On a ward now. Screw Aliez. We're watching Hacker. Yeah, it dodges the first ward, but seen on the bottom side. I'm out of my lore talk, back into my narrative speak of what we saw in game two. If you're just tuning in, Uzi and Chris dove at level two. And Elk and Shousey were laughing as they picked up a double kill with Hacker in the right place at the right time. Early game looked disastrous. It looked like a 2-0, but BLG bought it back. And here in this game number three, our eyes appealed to once again the focus lane. Weiwei is level three going for the invade. He's going to be in the perfect timing with Smite available. Skysplitter comes down, but he's over the wall. He doesn't have full vision. Smite in time. Shousey not going to throw the hook out, and Hacker gets away with it. Weiwei still on vision trying to be threatening. I kind of hover around because he does have push in both mid and bot lane. Uh, also has to smite up. He knows Hacker doesn't have his because Hacker just used his on the blue buff. Is he going to be able to get anything? Doesn't lose too much in terms of time. Does still have his whole bot side up. But Hacker, of course, did hover towards bot to go for that level 2 gank. So he wasn't clearing his camps for a time as well. Weiwei will be able to pick bot lane scuttle off of all these shenanigans. Yeah, so nice little bit of priority. He gets to go to the top side as well and pick up double scuttle too. So uh, the option there for Weiwei with teleport back towards mid so that Ofo has somewhat of a priority. And Lyric, early game going standard. Uh, while we're here at this point, outside of Ultra Prime being ultra line and talking about that Wombo, uh, talk to me a little bit about the early phase here of BLG with the winning lanes and how they can transition this into some of the early neutrals. To be fair, I actually don't think BLG have to do too much in regards to playing for their lanes. Right. Uh, I like the way that they operated around that last uh, play, trying to invade the enemy jungle, right? If you have pushing lanes and you have lanes that also scale incredibly well, uh, I think for them, just using that to play around Weiwei, try and find him an advantage could be very good. Uh, they're going to be looking towards bot as well, just for the fact that you have the Renata. Just, you know, squishy champion. They know she's going to be vulnerable to some of the engages pre-6 that can come from the Thresh. So they're going to try and get her to that 6 point nice and easily before their comp does come online, you know, playing in front of those neutrals. Well, it's important to know that if they don't really have to play towards winning lanes that much. Uh, for BLG, sits the game plan of what we've seen all series long. BLG have been a team that has just been coasting through a lot of these early games, uh, whether they've thrown it away or not, so... Again, we're in a similar position. Wave pushing up here against Fofo. He'll have a CS advantage, catching the majority of it. A top side breed actually having a bit of a CS lead as well. But Alia is soon approaching level six. And we know Malphite is going to smash into the man with the hammer. And that also is when it starts opening up potential gank opportunities for Hacker and Topside when he's, you know, clearing his camps towards that lane. Yep. Alia is just going in with his ultimate. Hacker able to follow through with the damage. Uh, Ali is though, we'll have to go for the reset now. Has TP available? 
When that time comes, it's going to be a little bit of a balancing act for Hacker, though, because if you are putting those resources on the top side, it's allowing Uzi and Chris for that free laning phase, and potentially Weiwei to look for a dive in bot, Chris throw out the ultimate, Weiwei jump in, disable the tower, and then you have all the damage you needed. So right. it really feels like Ultra Prime, not only the ones pressed to look for action, but the ones pressed to get vision down, spot out where Weiwei is, not make any mistakes. Yeah, so I'm using the mid lane just to push out Crying for now. Fofo hits level six first. Further to your point here, uh, Vision actually being controlled by Ultra Prime defensively, but Weiwei is returning. Down into the river, there's a control ward that'll spot him. And he doesn't care. He's like, whatever, dude. I know there's a ward there, but I don't know where Hacker is. The CS actually at an even point as well. The bear hiding in the bush. Hello, Hacker. We meet again. And the hunter meets the hunted. That makes no sense. Uh, I, I guess it's yeah. a hunter. No, he's a hunter. He would be the hunter in your analogy, yeah, but the way we had red buff, not wanting to look for that trade as lanes being pretty quiet, which the early game has been decently quiet throughout the series. Obviously last game. Uh oh, Ooh, oh Again, Chelsea. Under turret, I mean, a hook comes through. Chris, the minion died now into the bailout, but it's first blood territory. Ultra Prime again, punish BLG for a second time. And that's why pre six, I mean, you land an engage on Renata. She's not able to do anything. She has no no mobility, can't disengage. Uh, Shousey just with a really clutch hook. Mayor of Hook City potentially running for re-election. The reason why the Thresh is banned from him. Lyric, run us through once again. I don't know how much there's to run through. Just really nice Ooh. play when they walk up to hit turret. It sets up for the death sentence, throws down the ignite, and elk flashing forward. Chris does get off, uh, I believe it's the E, to get the shield and buys a bit of time, but at the end of the Don't day, matter. that time meant nothing. Lyric, it happened again. Bottom lane is just a fickle little beast for BLG, isn't it? It is. Uh, BLG, it's been very hit or miss. This also goes to why we I don't think we've seen too much Renata and why in the LPL we don't see too many non-engaged, non-tank supports in general. Just because of how squishy they are, how fragile they are. Yeah. Uh, very easy to find a kill on. And then when they don't have flash, typically these champions have push, so they are going to be overextended in lane. It makes them very easy to find ganks on. So... They did it. Now Ultra Prime pivoting up towards the Rift Herald. Bot lane already moving up. And heck, the combo's up. All your carries have the ults. And Fofo's going to have to stick around to clear the wave. Chelsea even moving up. The hook connects as well. Fofo not paying the respect. He flashes away. Crying flashes for the shockwave. All ult he's used. Fofo disrespects. And Chelsea says, sit down. Fofo not having the same escape tools that he had last game on the Azir. And he gets punished. BLG going to try and answer back from these plays with some plates down in the bottom lane. They'll be able to get them. Uh, Elk and Shelsey will be zoned off CS, but once again, at least they're picking up some of these camps in the jungle, not allowing for Weiwei to get even more than these plates down in the bottom lane. I mean, Shelsey's still moving in. Onto Chris, who's only level 5. There's a box that's still available from the previous play. Chris on award for now. Uzi getting solo time with the turret plating. And at least it's going to be a gold response. But Ultra Prime still up a thousand after the fact. We get a Herald here onto the jungler. Another hook thrown out by Shousey is an attempt. And Dragon going to be the trade at the very least. So for BOG, Lyric again. The early game is slipping ever so slowly away. Falling behind. But for BLG, once again, a comp that is more mid, mid late game oriented than it is playing in the early game. Uh, the thing for Ultra Prime is, I mean, they have great scaling as well. Oriana, Thelios, and the biggest thing is having that engage coming through, having main engage in Malphite, but also having secondary engage coming in with either a Death Sentence or Hacker being able to find his way in yeah. onto the back line. And BLG, three immobile carries. Heck, four immobile champions overall. Only the Volley Bear with that ultimate uh, able to escape any kind of engage coming through from Ultra Prime. So Ultra Prime, I think, have much better tools in the mid game to to follow through with the lead than they did in game two yeah uh, stability i would say there like the options available to punish uh, i love you talked about the immobility of blg so it's something i want to watch here as they start moving around because ultra prime the flash hook chelsea you absolute baller he lands it as well oh my god 
marry me. This is why Thresh is his champion. Thresh is the champion that will always come to mind when you think of Shao Si. He's a man on a mission this time around. They're able to drop the Herald in mid. You even look at items. Elk picking up the Gale Force already. So Uzi's going to have to be really careful, really respectful in that bot lane matchup as Weiwei getting chunks solo. My god, Ultra Prime. Oh. Running away with Where was game. this Ultra Prime? This is like the Ultra Prime at the start of the split, right? They they opened up with some pretty fun mechanics. And again, like, look at this. The confidence in the pants of this man. Like that hook incredible. It was absolutely beautiful. No time to respond coming out from Fofo. Didn't have flash up either, so even if he did have fast fingers, uh would have been quite hard for him. And Elk also able to return some plates in the bottom side after Uzi had picked up some of theirs earlier on. So gold quite nicely in favor of Ultra Prime, pretty much making its way up to 2k. And we've also seen top lane matchup, which the observers haven't been panned over since we've had so much action happen on the bottom side. Breathe has had to respect the kill threat coming out from Alias yep. whenever Hacker's not showing on the map. So playing quite close to his turret, not wanting to give over any advantages. And it's starting to open up the pressure to come out from Ultra Prime, where early game, they had three lanes that were getting pushed in. Now having two lanes that are quite comfortably able to, you know, fight for that Prio in top and bot. I mean, it's just so good to see Ultra Prime once again with another good early game, punishing BLG. Uh, BLG in game two, further to your point you made a couple of minutes ago, yeah, the gold lead never swung out of control, and BLG still had the scaling where the fights got pretty eager. BLG got better and better. They ended up winning game two because of it. At least in this game, this time, with the options you talk about for Ultra Prime, it feels like we're going to have access to a lot more of fun 5v5 set up in the old button. Uh, Lyric, I want to point out next objective to look towards is going to be a split between the second Herald and Dragon. BLG only having one. We do have later dragons in this game, and it doesn't seem to be the setup for a forced fight as it was in game one and game two. No, not, not going to be the same setup exactly, but look at the minimap right oh, now. So scared. Uh, Bree Breed's pivoting over. They know they need to defend this because Ultra Prime, of course, playing for this turret but four members here. The shock Blast coming through. They're setting it up. It's way, way with the ulti. The Shockwave, though, hits the Volley Berries in a bounce house, but the Renata Glass ultimate from Chris might have just done the trick. The Chaos Storm on top. Pepper down and BLG assaulted up. BLG pincered Ultra Prime, attacking from all angles. They had numbers advantage with Uzi even following just right behind Elk. And the collapse is beautiful. Punishing Ultra Prime for trying to guarantee themselves that mid lane turret. Nice use of Pryo coming out from Breathe. And then Chris and Uzi pretty much able to uh, answer the exact timing as Fofo. He does a flash up now, so we should be fine. Throws down the W. We'll be able to escape, but... The game, which was kind of slowly Replay. falling towards Ultra Prime's control, is now even. But again, look at the mini map. You see Breathe already here. The bot lane closely following. Damage comes through. Massive ult coming out from Weiwei. The AoE from Fofo. Uh, ultimate <laughs> from Renata gonna kind of lock the last few people down to guarantee the fight for the side of BLG. But even without that, it, it felt like the kind of starting force was enough of Weiwei and Fofo getting all their damage off. Chris, but yeah, nice little final touch. And for BLG, game comes back to dead even. Elk going to say, no, Hysteric. No, 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 no. It's not dead even. I'm an Aphelios with these white little shuriken things that make me look like a ninja. And as Elk picks up the fourth bit of turret plating, BLG want to punish him, but still very scared when he has a Gale Force. When Shousey's here, BLG pottering and turning and the hook denied for now. But Hacker goes on in crying again, has a shockwave at the ready. Golden goes Weiwei's TP into the back line. BLG want to make this a turn, but now with the bailout, Weiwei needs a reset, but can't get it. Elk picks up that kill, and Fofo now running in. The death sentence again, giving him a bit of deja vu, a bit of PTSD. Dragon, there and Ultra Prime have a rock who's at the ready. And Ultra Prime now. Oh, Hacker. Hacker. Okay, he ulties. He wants the kill. Breathe over. The hostile takeover, though, in the pit. Everybody hitting each other, and no, the ult does nothing. Okay. Well, they have a smite and running back in Ultra Prime, avoiding the death rocket. Ali has rock time, crying, hula hoop, it's a sombrero. uzi has been hit with a nice little bailout, but he can't get a kill. Ultra Prime may have whiffed, but at least Ali comes in to say good day. 
I gotta say, I'm just happy I have another clip of Hacker being a Chad flashing over a wall out of nowhere looking for a kill. I'm telling you, this guy does this consistently. But uh, the big thing in that play, something that we actually won't see in the upcoming replay, is a funny thing in League of Legends. Considering Ultra Prime lost the fight in mid and they died, that actually means they have tempo getting onto the map first because BLG will then need to reset after that fight. So it opened up Fofo. for the initial pick. Cause Fofo... Again, he has PTSD, but Chelsea flashes at him again. Minion saving his life. Elk with a bit of burst damage. Fofo has to flash again. This guy is getting bullied by an ex-regional player that they used to share. Yeah, I mean, heck, right? This is a guy who does have tons of experience, has played at MSI, played at Worlds. Coming in, I think he's always been, he, like he's always had high highs and low lows since he has been in the LPL. Glimpses of brilliance, and he's showing it once again here. And the good thing for Ultra Prime, right, is you look at where their gold is, it's on their mid laner and their AD carry, their two big carries of their side where BLG's uh, a lot more spread. They do have CS deficits in both mid and AD, but they do have a pretty decent one in top lane. Is we're right. going to into the replay, and we just get to see Hacker flashing in. Uh, this didn't accomplish too much, but it did chunk free down. Good. The hostile takeover following up, but no real damage to walk in. And this is BLG's composition. What champion actually walks up to Ultra Prime's comp to try and find a fight? There's no one <laughs> as Alias finds the ult crying. Uh, kind of botches his, yeah. but at the end of the day, it didn't matter. Uh, happened to the best of us. Hey, everybody knows that if, if you've played Orianna, if you're in the chat, you know that it happens to the best of us, right? So you gotta give him a break. Does it happen to Rookie? Rookie's the best Rookie of us. has actually hula hoop this split. Okay, I can't remember what game, but I remember casting it. Rookie has done a hula hoop as well. That's where I literally said the same thing happens to the best of us, because literally, Rookie is the best of us. Yes, yeah. I mean, that's the only way that one works is Ultra Prime. Really nice push to guarantee some turrets. Fofo. I don't know if he'll be able to answer on the opposite side. Weiwei has ultimate, but they'd, they'd be really ballsy to dive Alia's uh, full tank Malphite here. It's giving even time for Ultra Prime to try and respond towards this bot side. They aren't going to over aggress. They are just going to back off. And with no other neutral objective up on the map, we're still only about 18 minutes, so no Baron Dragon two minutes away. Uh, feels like we will just go into a bit of ping-ponging waves between both sides. BLG's comp. Again, not really the type of composition that could try and push in and aggressively walk into the enemy jungle, but they can look for a bit of a, a brush cheese. Do they have enough damage? What do you think? They need a couple more members, though, though. They're well, bringing the look, I was going to say, look. Yep, Chris and Uzi are on their way, so they should have enough members. Well, Ali is still with the ulti available. No flash, and maybe they do. Look at the burst. Take over. Use on top of Kryon. has to flash immediately, but they got what they came for. Chris ulti. Forcing out the flash. I'll take that as worth and BLG. It looks like the playbook is extending a little bit. It does feel like for BLG, it was a little bit of overkill in terms of how many ultimates they used. That's true. Also, very surprised Kryon committed to the TP there uh, instead of just, you know, farming your camps, maybe getting more vision down. Though no, they do already have the map littered in wards. But that pick actually doesn't mean all too much in terms of changing the game state, right? Because there are no neutrals open, it will allow them to push out some of these waves, you know, maybe try and deny some farm. But overall, not too much going to change. Now, though, for Ultra Prime, two items on your Oriana. Yep. Feels really massive. Fofo still not finishing his second one just yet. Elk also having an item advantage up over Uzi. So the items are there. Alias won't have his ultimate just yet, but it should be up in time for Dragon. And, and I'm glad you pointed out Elk because a Bloodthirster is something I want to keep my eyes on, especially when he's getting poked out. You talked a lot about how BLG's draft operates. Uh, getting a bit of health back after the fact is going to be a big deal, especially since Elk in game one and two has been a pretty big deal on his affiliate that he's gotten three times in a row. Up against Uzi, I think Elk has been probably the, the better AD in this game, in this series, in the whole series itself. As we group up, Lyric, 10 seconds. Are you ready? I am ready. Is Ultra Prime trying okay. to force their way in, getting their own vision. It will take BLG off the objective. Poke's good. The poke's going to be layered down. So we're, we're looking at the poke, and we're looking at the hostile takeover, which is just about to be up for Chris. That's right. A couple more seconds, and whoopsie-daisy, there we go. BLG in the bottom side of the river. Breathe with another rotation. Hits crying. 
This is the third dragon, so not the biggest deal, but Ali is ready for a blast coach. Wants the ulti. They know the rock is over the wall. Dwayne Johnson about to fling in as the dragon goes down. And the threat enough from the Scorpion King is, is enough. Ultra Prime with two on the board, and they just send BLG pack. And this is why I liked Ultra Prime's composition, because even just the threat of an engage is too much for BLG to walk forward. Weiwei, really the only one with any sort of safety, being able to either ult away or flash away is a bit tanky, so could take some damage, but it would still be quite rough. Uh, the poke not landing enough. I also like Ultra Prime, not like really committing too much before the dragon came up to give the windows for BLG to poke them out. And now for Ultra Prime, just slowly trying to make your way towards that soul point, have another few minutes. But heck, e even, you know, regardless of soul, I feel like the biggest thing for Ultra Prime's composition is just neutrals being up so they can find opportunities to fight. So next dragon comes up, if they get it cool, if not, as long as they can find the fight, that's what leads to Baron. That's what leads to the push sure. where they can try and end the game. And so it feels like those dragons are a lot more impactful for the fight rather than the dragon itself. And, and make an upset. Make the upset happen. BOG need this win for playoffs. How many times do I have to say it? It's got to stick with you guys because 7-7 seven and seven is not enough. BOG right now, one of the three spots available for playoffs, and they're not in it. Seven teams already locked in outside of them. BOG are not in it. Ultra Prime are testing them when they are out of playoff contention, and it is a good sign of life for this team for summer, but for BLG, still operational issues that need to be attended to as running forward in this game as a five-man unit through mid. They want that little pickoff. They want Breed's range to start hurting more and more. Bofo trying to do the same. Good shielding here from Chelsea with Guardian. Opening up the mid lane turret lyric. It feels like opening up the map for Vision is going to be a good idea here as well. Zelf sends the ulti forward. Breed heading up, though. Weiwei still doesn't want to die. This turret stays standing. The wave clear from UP. Pretty massive. Yeah, I'm, I am surprised that Ultra Prime tried to commit Krine up towards the top side to try and push out that wave that is already being pushed into BLG's base, especially as BLG just hover Whoa. around mid lane and Ultra Prime being a little bit cheeky. Red and white. Red and white makes everything all right. Ultra Prime have two members in front of the Baron. It's sneaky because BLG now send the rocket up. Nice from Uzi. Good timing. BLG spotting it and stopping the sneak attack. Otherwise, Ultra Prime, that could have been game-defining. Yeah, and sadly for BLG, not having a wave to capitalize off that play of then being able to pivot and, and put the siege down on mid and potentially take that tower, they will just have to back. But still, it is lucky for them that, you know, no sneak of the Baron will come through. No steals today. No one's Tom Nooking up in here. Because everyone knows Tom Nook, the biggest scammer <laughs> in the universe. Oh, he's a... Dude, those loans? I don't want those loans. Don't give me those loans. Dude, I don't even Just play Animal Crossing and I have bad dreams about Tom Nook. Honestly, the shirt as well, kind of disgusting and adds to it. I don't know why you play that I game. agree. Yeah, Tom Nook, Timmy and Tommy, all giant scammers. Uh, as You know, that's what Ultra Prime are trying to be. They're trying to scam BLG out of the series. That was supposed to be theirs. They're trying to Tom Nook. Yeah, I know there's going to be a lot of Animal Crossing fans probably angry at Tom Nook. Um, Lyric, I'll be honest, my, my missus got me to play it for a little bit. I think I did four hours of Animal Crossing on her island. And now she just abuses my account to get the free Nook Miles. I, I don't I don't <laughs> even get to play anymore. She's using me for the Nook Miles. She's using you for... I mean, that's... That's you cold. Know, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. He just wants to buy stuff for a, a magical merry-go-round. Anyway. A relationship for Nick Miles seems worth. Yeah. But yeah, back to the game. <laughs> okay. Look, it's 24 minutes in, and we'll set the tone for you. You're on a deserted island. You want to fill it up. Uh, sorry, we'll set the other tone for you. Ultra Prime are trying to deny BLG. We'll get a 1K gold lead. And I feel like, as I, as I turn 27 this year, Lyric, as I get older and watch League of Legends... I feel like the game is adding more and more mechanics. So as a color caster, please tell me what the main thing I have to watch out for on each team is before we see this fight in about 35 seconds. I mean, for Ultra Prime, it's super straightforward, right? We're keeping our eyes on Alia's position, even if he doesn't engage, just where he is to try to zone out the members of BLG from being able to walk forward. Uh, for BLG, I mean, it's going to be looking, I think, especially at Breed's poke coming through. If he can land it onto Elk and Cry, and that will be massive. And then if Crisp can use the hostile takeover 
to, you know, if they're funneled into a position, then follow through with some big AoE damage. If Elk has the right guns, hostile takeover means Inferno. Means that Elk gets 100% attack speed. that hook land? Onto Weiwei, the box is there, the Flay Jungler's dead! Shousey get my MVP vote right there. This man is magic. Yeah, Shousey has just been finding the hooks every time they need them. They're still going to pivot towards mid to get this wave pushed out, but looks like L, maybe doing Dragon Solo, could just start heading over and then pivot up towards topside, get some control for Baron. As Weiwei is still down for 16 seconds. And there's Soul Point coming up. Red Hot Ultra Prime now have Baron in their favor with no vision. Crispin Fofo heading forward. Shousey delivering as mayor of Hook City. Baron begins Lyric. And look at Elk's guns. Yeah, Elk's guns oh, massive right now, but I'm more focused on crying right now. Still has the shockwave up. Like, it's still massive right now in terms of items. The stopwatch is there. Uh, another thing to keep track of has been summoners. Something we haven't really done all too much, even though I hit on that being a big point in pick ban. Because for BLG, I mean, right? If they can dodge the Malphite ultimate once, or, or they can use this to, to dodge it on a shockwave or something, then they can at least try and kite out the fight and win from there. But for Ultra Prime, if they can try and burn some of those summoners, really will be so key and not even allow BLG to be in any area that, that Ultra Prime's members are around. But BLG have played decently reserved. They haven't even put themselves in, in, in range to be challenged by an engage, but it has opened up Ultra Prime to just take up whatever they've wanted on the map. So let me ask you about side lanes because if Ultra Prime still with those alt buttons still being reliable, uh, still pulling BLG into these objectives, should BLG then be playing more towards the sides with the Victor, with the Jace, and adding a bit more pressure so that Ultra Prime don't get the perfect fight? I mean, the problem is Mofo can't really play towards sides. I mean, it would be very punishable. Victor, you know, right. pushing towards Tier 2 turn uh, turrets on the opposite side. And for Breathe, I mean, he'll have pressure. He shouldn't really be able to hit Tier 2 up against Alias without threat coming through. Ooh. Crisp had the flash. Mm. Crisp had the flash yeah. from Chelsea again. We just we just haven't seen this Renata pick really work out. And we're just gonna keep going back to posturing around mid. This is where BLG will be most Elk. comfortable. Ulti. Moonlight Vigil doesn't hit. Doesn't hit Gale Force, so it doesn't hit the ulti. Elk has got himself a nice HP, but there's a Gale Force. Oh. Breathe is alpha out of there. That is what I call first name Chad. And now for Ultra Prime, looks like they might just turn and try and force a fight by hitting Baron. They have great turn potential coming out from the Thresh and the Malphite. BLG will have to walk in. I, I think the best you're hoping for is to still come from Weiwei, but this is also where Renata's pretty Shock good. All of them wave. in a small space. Onto Weiwei, half HP, but he finds it with the flash in instead. Hostile takeover in the Baron pick. Chris gets Hacker. Weiwei in, but he can't get the swine. Don't Fofo over the wall steals it. <laughs> BLG's mid laner making the hero play. Chris finally gets something. Zuzi gets reset. Look at him going forward, but Elk again. The bigger AD carry after the Baron. In fact, it's a triple kill time. Elk is about to ram this down like a deer. Running forward, he gets fed up with the dissonance. Chris, for his life, he finds himself out, but Breathe wants to turn. Penta denied for now. Baron still for the moves from Ultra Prime. Right as the fight started, it's going to highlight how big the hostile takeover can be when the enemy is putting themselves in a choke. You can guarantee that that one hits. Set up for the enemy jungler to go down. And then Fofo being able to get the Baron. <laughs> that one, I mean, it feels like every Baron this series has been very wacky. As we're going to get into the replay here. Ultra Prime tr just trying to force a fight. They don't really care about the Baron too much or not as long as BLG come in. Crying, wasting the ult on Weiwei. Because they get the Baron solo, they want to commit to it. There's the hostile takeover, though. Opens up for Elk to wow. hit Hacker. And then we see here, Fofo going into the pit, finishes off Baron with the E. Ali is getting taken down on the opposite side. And this is where Elk starts to turn things around. Uzi pops off, gets the reset, feels himself, but ends up just running it down into Elk. Elk not feeling comfortable to run into the following members of BLG after that finish line. Oh, Elk again, here's the ulti coming through. Uzi hit hard, grabs him already used though. And on the back line, oh, Ali is from left field, the shockwave combo. Those ulti buttons from Ultra Prime come in handy. From out of nowhere, the rock slams down. Yeah, the Malphite pick coming in clutch. The hard engage oh, look at this guy. up against this BLG Cop. Elk's running forward. He's got a Bloodthirster. He's got a Thresh and an Orianna. He will not be stopped. 
BLG. Lyric, look at the death timers. Ultra Prime want to take it out now. Yeah, Ultra Prime, I think they could do it too. I mean, they still have Engage coming out from Shouncy. The box is up as well to try and dissuade any walking it's in. It's Crescendum, it's Severum. Turret's going to go down pretty fast. It's the last defense. Uzi has to keep this team towards playoffs. Ultra Prime getting hypey. Bailout use, but Uzi needs a reset. He won't find it. Down he goes for Elk. The better 80 carry of the series. BLG, this can't be happening. <laughs> You're the team that's trying to make it towards playoffs. You're the team still in the running. Ultra Prime acting like the better on the day. It's BLG still defending now as Alias Elk running forward. This man waiting for his ulti. His Gale Force still there. They're sticking around. It's all up to Fofo. Chaos Storm oh. is up. He's going to put up oh. that big damage. Try and chunk them out. Alias has his ult coming up. Alias has his ult coming up. Look at the Malphite. Weiwei jumping in. But Alias is about to rock onto someone. Melee range. It won't matter. The Shockwave is a four oh. man. The damage follow up not existing and crying, making it close on the way out. My God, that da you right, even a bit more damage, killing those members of BLG could have led in the end. And now Bree teeping in, wanting to finish off this tower. Then BLG can try and pivot towards that dragon, not allowing the two members of Ultra Prime to take it. So BLG buy themselves some more time. I need to calm down. This series has seriously been way more tense than it should be. We're gonna go back to the base defense of BLG. Luckily for them, no ultimate on the Malphite means they can't just hard force into Uzi here. Elk though still finds oh the damage. The, 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 the Crescendum turret coming out along with the Calibrum range allowing them to find that pick. And then BLG here committing to the engage right before Alias' ult comes up. Uh, feels like one of the big takeaways for me. Fofo having the Chaos Storm as well. They have enough damage to try to dissuade them from continuing. As, you know, we went pretty far back in the three plays. Now, now just a bit of posture. Come on, Prime. Okay, it's engage, late game. I'm pretty scared it. we're there gonna miss the game ending play. Uh, yeah, okay, bang, 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 and this person does. Point is, does. right, Elk Gale forced in, opened up the engage from Volley Bear as well as the victor. That shockwave was seriously so sick. Sadly, no follow-up available with only crying and Chelsea left up. Uh, pretty crazy. So, Lyric, gold's even. Gold doesn't matter. We're at 32 minutes in, and it feels like playoff lifeline for BLG on the line. How many times can I repeat it? I mean, Ultra Prime at the moment, now looking like the stronger team. Bounties on two members. That shockwave from Crying did so much work. And with that fourth completed item, it will one-shot pretty much. We've also got Elk on the final legs of his, what could be a GA. BLG now back on the map. We've got a while before the Dragon that's going to be Sol. We have Baron in a minute 10 though, Lyric. And that seems to be what could be the final objective. I mean, for Ultra Prime, you only need one fight. You need one fight, then you can end this game. That's why they're, they're posturing around mid. But again, this is where BLG's comp does pretty decent because they're able to push in the wave. They're able to get this poke off because all the members of Ultra Prime are just layered right in front of you. Luckily for Ultra Prime, Ali is very tanky. Just stand in front, take any of those hits if you're not able to just dodge out. Chelsea's looking for it again, Hysterics. Water over the wall, though. They know that he's angling for it. At the very least, his mid turret tier one at 33 minutes in the game, still standing, is so annoying for BLG. And Elk walking forward with Infernum, the wave clear instant, Uzi, Uzi taking splash damage, and it hurts that much. Again, they stick around mid as this flank. That's going to hurt them. BLG, Alia's coming in. No ward there. Breathe to spot him out. They know the mouth oh, fight's there. Fighting. Watch out, Alia's. This is game breaking. He has flash, but Ultra Prime are too far away. Yeah, they're going to end up backing off for now. Now my eyes are back on Shousey. If Shousey lands a death sentence, he's being promoted to the governor. What well, they're going on in. Remember, Alias with the ulti hostile takeover already used. Way, way in a bit deep. Uzi trying to buy spaces. Fofo in with the Chaos Storm. Doing a lot of work. He flashes away from the Chaos Storm. But the bailout comes through. Fofo needs a reset, but down he goes. Ultra Prime with five versus four. But look at the health bars. Uzi, it's up to you. Superstar 80 carry. Can he defend Baron? Oh, I... I feel like this is going to be rough for Ultra Prime if they look to try and bait Baron here because they don't have those same tools to turn without Alias having that ultimate. Luckily, they still have supers in mid. It looks like BLG are just going to give this one up. Okay, down it goes. At least they broke open the mid turret at 34 minutes in the game. But Baron goes over to Ultra Prime. At least some firm level of the gold lead. And we're going to continue on, Lyric. It feels like until we get to the Elder Dragon. Look again at how this started. Yeah, Weiwei goes in, and again, I'm really surprised to see BLG 
feeding the aggressors to run forward. They do it because they thought they found Elk, but Elk has flash. Weiwei, of course, gets chunked out on the retreat. He can't do anything. Bofo having to flash the Shockwave just leaves him vulnerable for the Malphite ultimate to come through. BLG gets some damage off back on the like on the, the way out from Ultra Prime, but not feeling comfortable to follow up, which, again, surprised me a little bit considering that they don't really have any great engage tools outside of Shaozi's hook, considering that the Malphite ultimate is down. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, Zin Zhao is all not able to get into the fight. Ultra Prime through mid. Baron buff is here for the next two minutes, Lyric. Let's see what they can do, because they already broke down Inhibitor before. It's refreshed. They're back up, heading towards that Nexus that they tried to force when they got the picks. Yeah, and again, Fofo, no flash. That is crucial, because Ultra Prime can very easily focus Fofo with any of this crowd control. Uzi does have both of his summoners up. He will be a bit harder to take down, but with this Baron, Ultra Prime keeping this siege going. Freeze angle is important here as well. Alia's blocking means no damage gets through to Cryon or Elk. Full HP ultimate coming through from Elk, but he misses as he runs on in. Still feeling confident, but BLG now stepping up themselves. Alia's ult is in, but Fofo with the golden timing. Shouts with the hook. The shockwave, oh, beautiful! But here's a reset. The bailout onto Fofo from Chris is carry potential as Uzi. Steps up forward with Gale Force. Now Ultra Prime running for their lives. BLG, the defense perfect. Weiwei's in. Elk needs to survive, but into the GA. Crying golden. Billy Billy Gaming gonna hold on for now. Elk surely to die as Chris is MVP. Yeah, and there's, there, there's such long death timers. The TP coming out from Fofo. I don't know if he can end the game, but if he can get a turret, if he can get an inhibitor, that can relieve so much pressure from the side of BLG. They're committing both TPs. It seems like they want to look for something big here. Dragon up as well. But Lyric, Do they, can they really end the game I mean, they can't. Death ten, ten second death timers. Ten second on top and jungle. Low on Chelsea too. They're not going to be... look at Uzi. I mean, they're running up. But how are you going to do this? I mean, this is throwing everything into the wall. Alias will have ulti up soon as well for BLG. If they attempt this, it could go so horribly wrong, but they're jumping in on top of Hacker. Going Golden Uzi's here as well. Never mind me. Hacker with the defense, but he's down. Chaos Storm Alias, no ulti. BLG playing with fire, and they ain't missing. One Nexus turret comes through. The bailout for the attack speed. Cry needs to defend, but he can't. Hostile takeover through. Shockwave, hit the Nexus, hit the Nexus. BLG, hold on. That was the biggest steal of the century. What? How did BLG win that game? Congratulations, Uzi. Your first series win of LPL 2022. Who cares how it happens? It happens. And with that... My goodness, what was that? Eight wins.